Yo everybody, welcome back to another video in the first person shooter tutorial series. In this video we are going to be covering left hand IK. Uh, you guys made some great animations in the previous videos uh, that have your left hand actually following the weapon along, but uh, once we get into doing procedural recoil and stuff like that, uh, your hand won't be exactly where it's supposed to be. So that's what uh, this is going to teach you in this video. Uh, if you haven't been following along the series, that's totally fine. I will show you guys how to do left hand IK for your weapons in your game. If you guys are new here, my name is Taken Grace, and I do Unreal Engine tutorials and videos just like this one. So if you guys want to become a better game dev with me, then uh, hit the subscribe button, join the community, and let's get right into the video. All right, so let's get into Left Hand IK now. So uh, what we're going to do here first is we're going to open up our interface folder. And we're going to go into uh, BPI Anim Update, and if you don't have a, a Blueprint interface, just make sure you create one here. Uh, blueprint, Blueprint Interface, okay? All right, so um, we will need um, in this interface uh, a way to update the transform of our left hand and to be able to send it from our player uh, over to the animation blueprint. All right, so we're going to add a new function and we're going to call it left hand transform. All right, we're going to add an output of a transform. All right, so uh, transform right there. Uh, that's what it's going to look like. That's all we need to do. We'll hit compile and we'll exit out of this. Uh, the next step is we need to go into our player character. And we need to make sure that this is implemented in our player character because we have not done that yet in this series. Uh, so we're going to add BPI anim update. Okay. Uh, we're going to hit compile and that will add the interfaces over here. This one here is uh, not yellow, which means that we can double click on it and uh, add some uh, stuff in here. So first thing we want to do, we want to get our equipped weapon and we want to right click and convert this to a validate get. We want to just confirm that it's valid and if it is, then we want to return the transform. All right, so out of here, uh, we need to uh, get the weapon mesh, which is the obviously the mesh of the weapon or the skeletal mesh of the weapon, pardon me. So weapon mesh, okay. We need to get bone transform as it probably is pretty obvious, this is going to get the bone transform for whatever bone we put in here. Um, so for those who did not uh, follow along in the last video, what you need to do is make sure that on your weapons, uh, specifically your weapon meshes or whatever the uh, whatever you're using in your gun there, uh, every one of them is going to have to have a socket named left hand socket. Okay? Uh, but uh, for those following along the series here, this sh uh, should already be done, so we don't need to do that. Alright, so in here left hand socket and uh, make sure that that's the same name in each one of your guns it's named exactly the same same uppercase and lowercase letters etc all right uh, transform space we're gonna leave on RTS world space okay so we are getting the bone transform of our weapon and then we now need to translate that information and put it into the bone space for our players skeleton so uh, we need to get uh, we need to break this. And then we need to get our arms, so our, um, that's the wrong one, sorry, the first person mesh. And we need to transform to bone space, okay? We're going to plug location in here. We do not need to plug in rotation, okay? And uh, we'll just drag this along, and we just need to come to the out position and make transform. So it tra turns it back into a transform pin, and we're going to just plug that into the return, okay? Uh, for the transform to bone space, this is where we need to select hand underscore I think it's a lowercase hand underscore R just gonna check my notes to make sure that that is correct yes it is so yeah lowercase hand uh, underscore R okay all right so the reason we're hearing this note is we want to translate this into our hand R bone space so that we can effectively tell our left hand where to go in relation to our right hand all right so uh, that's all done in our player that's all we need to do we're gonna hit compile uh, we are, we'll leave this open for now, but we need to open up our character's um, animation blueprint. Uh, first things first, we do need a reference to our player here, uh, because we need to run this every frame. So we want to, uh, we'll do this off of the uh, begin play here, so we only do this once. Okay, uh, we need to get our player character. And we need to cast to the first person cast to first person character all right 
Okay, so uh, there is a possibility this doesn't work and that's only because of the order of initialization. So we'll promote this to a variable here. Um, so if this doesn't work, it's gonna fail. Uh, so uh, let's just test it out right now. Let's just do a print, whoops, that is literally the complete not right node there. Uh, we'll add a print string here. I just wanna test it out here. And if it works, then uh, I will uh, we'll skip this part, but if it doesn't work, I'll show you guys a workaround here. Uh, so we'll say failed anim bp okay so we'll hit compile i'm going to delete this print string as well we don't need that anymore all right let's see what happens hit play didn't get a failed message so uh it went through so that's great we don't have to do uh the extra little bitty bits uh what i would have done is i would have just added a loop here uh like an integer and we would have tried three more times to try to cast to our player and then it would eventually set it here um, otherwise this won't work right so uh, okay, so what we need to do now is out of then two, we are going to get our player character and we are going to uh, drag it here and we're going to get the left hand IK transform, but we want to get the one that says BPI anim update, not this one. Okay, because uh, if you get the other one, that's getting this one right here. And if you double click on it, there's no data in here. So uh, definitely not the one you want. So you want the one coming out of our player character's BPI. Okay, uh, we're going to plug this in and then we're going to right click and promote this uh, to a variable and we'll call it left hand, well, let's spell that well right yeah left hand IK <laughs> transform all right uh, we'll hit compile so now every frame we're pulling from our player character the spot um, of the equipped weapons left hand or left yeah left hand socket and then plugging it into this transform to use inside this animation blueprint okay Alrighty, so uh, let's uh, go into our anim graph, and this is where we're going to make the magic happen, alright? So, uh, just a quick note, so right here we have um, a slot, so um, yours, this will say arms if you're in the first person template, if you're in the third person template it'll say default. Um, this is where we play montages, so like in this project we're going to be doing um, shotgun rechambering, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's going to be playing uh, a montage instead of playing an, like an animation animation. Well, it's an animation, but it's a montage. But anyways, uh, this means that when it plays here, it bypasses everything in this graph and just plays what the animation track has um, and then outputs that as the pose, okay? So uh, so keep that in mind. Um, this is obviously for switching our weapons uh, f run by the anim updates uh, current, uh, so, sorry, switch weapons that we made in a previous video. So we want to put our left hand IK between locomotive state machines which has all of our rifle animations in that we made or that we did the last video and rifle animations which is a cached pose that we can then reuse in this animation graph which we're doing right here to drive this whole thing okay so hopefully that makes sense in terms of what all of these are for um so uh we'll break this for now uh we need to right click and we need to get a two bone ik is it a function no right here skeletal controls two bone ik okay Let's plug that in. It's gonna uh, add a um, component to local, uh, little convertivert thing here. All right. Um, so, so basically, to explain what a two bone IK is, it's gonna take a three bone chain. It's you're gonna give it an effector location. So in that case, that's our left hand. And Unreal Engine is gonna try to. Um, basically solve the goal you're giving it. So if you move the hand over here, it's going to determine based on the three bone chain uh, where those specific joints and stuff need to be in order to meet that goal of the hand. Okay, so that's how IK generally works. It's working as a solver, okay? Okay, the uh, other thing that we need is called a fabric node. What the fabric node does is this enables us to um, perform forward and backward solves on this IK rig. Forward solves are uh, when you tell the control to go somewhere, then it's going to solve the, everything else in the chain. Uh, the backward solve is if you put animations onto the rig, uh, then it's going to reverse that animation data and may, and solve it onto your rig. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but you do need both of these nodes in order for this to work. Okay? Uh, we can then plug this into uh, rifle animations and get the component to local convertivert thing again. Alright, so we'll start with two bone IK. We'll click on this guy. First of all, we'll get rid of the joint, or sorry, we need the joint target location and the effector location, but we don't need alpha. So what we can do is go down to alpha and click on the pin here and you can go expose this pin, uncheck that, and that will go away and make it a little bit cleaner. Okay. 
Uh, you can do the same thing on the fabric node. We don't need the alpha. Um, it doesn't remove that value. The value will be over here. It's just can't be changed dynamically, okay? Uh, and all the alpha would do is uh, it would blend between this hand IK and your existing animation. So if you have it at zero, it's going to skip the hand IK. All right, so let's grab our left hand IK transform times two. So we'll get that here and then we'll get it here as well. We'll plug this into the effector transform for our fabric node. We will split struct pin here and plug in the transform to the effector location. Okay, let's click on the two bone IK and let's start working over here now. So this is gonna be our left hand. So we'll just put in hand, hand L. Uh, that's going to be our effector location. All of this is fine. The effector location space we want to be bone space. Okay. Uh, and the effector target is the hand L. So this is us just telling it which hand we want to be uh, the target uh, so that this can solve for the three bone chain. So we're, we're, we're going to tell the left hand where to go and it's going to make everything else do the work so that it can make that happen. All right. Uh, okay, so the joint target where did it go uh that should be parent bone space and the joint target for that will be the upper arm l okay that'll be the top bone in the chain okay that part is done let's go to fabric now and uh we're gonna come up to the top here all right the effector target for this will be the hand r and that will be in bone space and we're going to do the effector rotation source as no change. We don't want to change anything about the, the hand R. We just want to take the data from the hand R because remember we transferred the, uh, the data into the hand R bone space in our player. All right, so the tip bone, this should be the hand L. That's the tip of the bone that we want to do the solving. Uh, the root bone of that is the clavicle L. If you follow the, the hierarchy chain up the skeleton, that's what you're gonna get. Okay, that should be it. Um, we're gonna hit compile. The last thing we need to do is we need to do the joint target location. Um, so I've done this in two other projects. These numbers work. So I'm gonna put what these numbers that I saved in my notes here and uh, put them on screen so you guys can copy them or else you can just do some trial and error on your own part there, which I don't, hopefully you guys won't need to do. So it'll be 60 and then 12.063 and negative 43.419. Make those nice and big for you guys so you can see them. And uh, okay, now we'll hit compile again and this should work. Uh, your guys' won't look perfect like mine because this is the second time recording this video. I just have a theme of screwing up the first time I record this for some reason. But um, so yeah, your hand won't be exactly in place and that's okay because now we can set that while the game's actually running. Uh, so we'll just hit F8 and we will uh, we'll just grab this. Let's go into our guns. So we'll go into weapons. We'll go. I'm gonna open the sniper because that's what I have equipped right now. Go into the sniper rifle. You're gonna select left hand and then the transform. And now when you move this around, you'll move your hand around. So you can just set that however you want. And you can see that the uh, Unreal Engine's trying to solve that goal with the bone chain, right? Okay, so uh, that's all you need to do. And then your left hand will work fine. And uh, you can do some more testing here. Uh, just make sure that uh, it follows your gun perfectly, which it should. All right, and uh, there you guys go. Now you have left hand IK for your weapons, and hopefully you guys found that video super helpful. Uh, now we're going to get into the fun stuff with the first person shooter series. We're going to be uh, working on the interact uh, system so that we can interact with all of our weapons. Uh, and then the following video, we're going to start picking up and dropping weapons uh, so that we don't have to constantly go into our player character and change our default weapons uh, like we have been. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys are excited for that. So if you want to look into that, if you guys are new here to the series, uh, definitely hit the subscribe button. Uh, every Saturday, we got a new video coming out for the series here, and we will be learning a ton of different stuff in this series. So, all right, so I hope you guys really like this episode. Please comment down below to let me know uh, what you guys liked about it, uh, if you have any questions, or if you have any feedback uh, for the show here. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video there. Take care. Uh, show you guys something uh, that I pointed out in the last video. In the last video, I had um, the uh, weapons when you jumped, it would kind of move to the left. And I told you guys I'd figure out what that was regarding. Uh, all right, so what it was what was happening is I just put a print string on the end here to tell me what my speed was. And I saw that. Uh, so yeah, you can see that my uh, it's printing my speed now. And when I this is my max walk speed, which is 600, which should be the same as in yours. Uh, but when I am walking and then jump, I actually go above 600, almost close to 750 sometimes. 
Um, and that uh, is causing the animation to kind of move to the to the left a bit because we had it set uh, to start blending to the sprint animation after it goes over 600. Uh, so the easy fix for that is just uh, in your animation um, blend spaces for your thing here. So just add, uh, this is the uh, AK, so uh, all I did was I uh, just type in idle to get my AK idle 2. Or that's the idle one. I uh, just plug this in here and make this like 750. So basically, you want uh, just put two walk animations, and we're kind of creating a little zone where the tr like the transition between the run and walk, uh, you know, gives us a little bit of leeway when we jump. So uh, that should stop the stuttering. So 